C. Crawlface. Thanks so much for the ongoing support, contributions. Thanks for the help, man. Thanks for being a part of this community. You rock. Just over another $1,000 investment with the tripod, the cameras, and the SD cards. Thanks again, man. Thanks for the ongoing support to all who support this channel. Five, 10 minutes filming the sky, yes, first test. Uh, even though there was a lot of clouds, we're seeing better detail on the objects. So yeah, it's twice as good. That's, I guess I can say, as compared to the Z1. Um, please take the time to wash your screen. You're not going to enjoy or even see anything in this video if you do not wash your screen and close all your blinds. It's just really not pleasant looking at these infrared videos um, in the daytime, I understand it. So try to help yourself, just don't sit in the sun, you won't see anything at all. With only a 10 minute quick test yesterday, last night, I'm already seeing more detail, look at that. You see it right inside of the light, what's going on as compared to the Z1, well there's a lot more quality, uh, a wider screen by the way, I'm, we're in 1080p now, no need to uh, over magnify anything. We're hearing about radio bursts on Venus. I posted the videos, plenty of them, real radio bursts. And this, I got a flash yesterday, so I'll be looking for those too. How do you attract energy? You connect to it. You plug yourself in. Just like a frequency on a radio. And then you pull that energy towards you. And there's a line from you and that energy source. Something I don't talk about ever, but I see a lot of them are orbs. I see them in the daytime. I see them uh, on my shoulders, my videos, when I'm doing my videos in the day. It's just never ending and um, it's ahead of its time, but there is life out there and we're not alone. With the second generation, I'm seeing more objects, that's for sure. Oh yes. And this straight edge object, you'll see another one. I'm seeing that appearing. Of course, now I'm adjusting, getting used to the new images, views. There's so much more light, 15 levels of light on this one. Look at the straight edge. So what are you seeing as compared to the Zen, Z1? Zen 1, yes. Um, it's that you're seeing more detail. We're in 1080p, it's a higher quality, and there's less fuzz. That's good. Ta-da! This is what nobody shows. Not many people show it. I'm sure Cindy sees some too and has to do some adjusting with her own and bring the exposure down. And when you bring the exposure right down, you'll see basically the UFOs and the stuff out further out. And here, if you leave it, the exposure up, you get all this fuzz and dust. So there's a way to distinguish the difference between all the fuzz and dust and the UFOs quite simply. And that dust that I showed you is not every day. And when I say dust, it's an accumulation of many things, both uh, probably living objects too that appear, light objects, orbs, but we're not gonna hide. There is some dust and pollen out there and there are simple ways of not filming them or mixing them up with UFOs, it's important to mention. So look at the real objects. Here's a falling star that's gonna go by. You'll see it. The exposure's taken down. There you go. It's only going to pick up bright objects. So those little bugs that were in the screen, don't even worry about them. You'll never see them unless you deliberately show them. So I just got the camera and anything that's going to be out of the ordinary or that I'm seeing too often in the screen, most often is going to be debris. And it's going to happen only on the day where pollen is apparent in the air. The infrared camera is very sensitive and it is going to pick it up. But is it impossible to continue viewing UFOs? Not even a problem. Not a problem at all. It's just adjusting, um, uh, properly adjusting your image. These rippled objects, um, like the first time I saw this was, well, it's similar to Cindy Lou Who's uh, infrared capture. Listen, there's a lot out there and analyzing, seeing things go by, whatever goes by too often, whatever is uh, problematic in an image, because these, like these here, that is dust, right? 
uh, I mean, look at it spiraling around. It's windy. So I know that if there's wind, anything that's dust, small, or a bug is going to have a hard time flying straight. There's no way you can mistake uh, a bug with a meteor or a UFO. This is see-through. You can't, you know, you can see through it, but it's not going straight. It's floppy. It's going up now. It was going right. And it's windy. So use your common sense. It's because it's a windy day, and that's why we're seeing objects whiz by like that. A UFO will sway left to right, but not like not like a bug or a leaf that's swaying in the, in the wind or a feather. So here's uh, some information I never share with you guys. So I'm documenting these characteristics. Like this one I enjoyed. I'm going to see if it comes by again. I'm going to see if I see more shapes and sizes. These are just dusts and hazes. But listen, not everything is a dust and haze. You understand? Look at these things, okay? The exposure is right down. I shouldn't see anything bright unless, especially not bugs. So when I see these big lights like that go by and stuff, well, you take note of them. It's not something that occurs all the time. This was only once it occurred. Look at this one. There's some amazing shots here. So I went crazy with the exposure, took it right down, almost off. And again, this bloody bright object goes by. Infrared is a tool. Things are hot. This object is very hot. So is the star beside it, and that's why we see them. The little objects you, I just left in for you to see going by are not stars, and they're not hot at all. Here's another further away one, but yes, I'm so happy the Z2 is going to show us more detail. It's going to show us more of the shapes and forms of these objects. Let's zoom in to finish off the video. Tonight I'll be outside, so this is the first test. Uh, it, uh, guys, this was 10 minutes outside, so tomorrow, <laughs> a couple hours, you can only imagine what we'll find. There's a lot of light intake on this camera, a lot of settings, a lot of cool stuff you can do with the Z2. Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem.